Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. World 2015, it's our sixth year of coming to EMC World. It's actually where we launched theCUBE in 2010, so we're always excited to come down here. And when we're at EMC World, we get our next guest on. Chris Wetzel, welcome from Rackspace. Yeah, thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah, I was doing a little research before he came on and looking up some of your old CUBE interviews and at EMC World 2013, it was all about OpenStack. Yep. At EMC World 2014, it was all about storage. Yep. So what's the big thing for EMC World 2015? Yeah, um, lots of good stuff out there. You know, Rackspace, we, um, we love this show. A lot of the things that EMC is telling the world about, hybrid computing, um, data lakes, all that stuff plays very well into what Rackspace does in terms of delivering kind of managed value on top of cloud, so right, it's right. a great show for that. But still fanatical customer Absolutely. service. Absolutely, Absolutely. fanatical support. All right, core. so let's jump into, so what, specifically, what are some of the new uh, things you have on the storage side that you guys are working yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, it's been, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the same is, is one piece of it. We have, you know, we're very, very strong with EMC across the portfolio, VNX, VMAX. Um, we've expanded our uh, Isilon uh, port, uh, product with, with the EMC. Um, Data Lakes is a big, big place still, and you, you'll notice a lot of the conversations around here about how that helps you grow your storage over time, add services to it as you see fit, analytics or SMB or NFS or whatever you need. Right. Um, which is where Rackspace comes in with expertise. So a lot of good stuff. So let's dig into the data lake concept. Like yeah. We hear a lot about it here and obviously um, these are the people selling data lakes. You're out there delivering data lakes. Yeah. Uh, how's the adoption going in the custom in the customer set? How do they like the, the concept? Are they able to execute it? Is it yeah. new and that different for them, or is it kind of a natural progression? Yeah, it, I think it feels a little bit of both. Um, I think shows like this absolutely help educate customers in terms of the value of the data lake, um, how to think about it. It is it's it's different than doing a kind of a Hadoop cluster and kind of ingesting the data that way. But I think uh, what it comes down to, what we see, is just the value of it. Um, not a one size fits all, but when you have a large data footprint, you want to be able to access our uh, HDFS with it. Being able to add compute to it um, is a huge value to customers. And uh, not as many uh, full to full adopters right now, a lot of conversations around how they'll grow into it. Uh -huh. Which is the other thing that we like about Isilon, is you can start with a footprint and deliver file shares or whatever you need, and then as your, your business grows, you can add it, which is uh, it's just very, very powerful. Right, and as we were talking a little bit before we, uh, we went live off camera, you know, it's really horses for courses. You know, what's the workspace, or excuse me, what's the uh, the application space? What's the workload that you're trying to deal with? And then what's the appropriate technology? Absolutely. Right, it's not one size fit all. Absolutely, yeah. So let's talk about Flash. Flash is, uh, everyone's talking about Flash. We've had a, a couple of great uh, guests on earlier, uh, how it's just really transforming their world. I wonder if you can share some some uh, interesting takes from your point of view and some of the customers you guys deal with. Yeah, yeah, and we see, um, Flash is still kind of, it, it's, a, it's an incredible product. Uh, I would say still an up and comer for us in terms of you know, customers figuring out what it does for them. Um, kudos to the VNX team, very, very solid. You know, we've been jamming SSDs into VNX for several years now. So it's that kind of progression. As customers reach those limits, uh, Flash is a great answer for that. Um, so we leverage the AMC partnership to help kind of solve that with customers together. Right. And when those make sense, you know, we can deliver that um, for those customers. Right, but then there's still IP connected storage, sand storage, there's still all these other different options. So yes. what are some of the things when you when you talk to customers and help them decide which one to choose, why, what are some of those conversations? Yeah, and it's it's all over the map. What it really comes down to is um, the best ones for us are what, what are you trying to solve? What what problem do you have? What is your, your application you want to kind of bring to Rackspace to the cloud? Right. Um, when those happen, we have our you know our solutions experts to kind of engage with the customer, and we can help architect. We have all the storage. That's not usually the problem. It's right. what what you can afford. What do you need? Is it performance? Is it you know resiliency? Whatever. Right. Um, on the on the flip side, you know there are some customers that, that they know a ton about the storage themselves, and they come and say, "Here's what I want, and here's what I need," and we have the ability to customize that for them, um, and you know deliver that service to them as, as fast as we can. Right. And we were talking again off camera a little bit about how when good enough is good enough and some of these evolving technologies that just continue to run, continue to run. There's always something kind of eating at its heels, but it's like x86, it's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. What are you seeing on that kind of a front in terms of some of the storage options? Yeah, I, the best one for me has been Fiber Channel. Uh, every year I'm on here we talk about is, is Fiber Channel going to die? What's Fiber Channel look like? And uh, at Rackspace, you know, we continue. We just, uh, just last year we worked with Brocade and uh, came up with a phenomenal design for our latest data center that 
better performance, better uh, uh, scalability, better you know cost for us, which really really keeps that technology relevant. So it's uh, chugging away, and a year later, and I joke, I think I'm one of the few <laughs> that believes it's going to stay around. But as long as it keeps making those advancements, it, it does the job, right, and, right. Uh, and and it's great for us. Right, and then talk about you know you guys have been in the data center space a long time, right? Fanatical service is really what started the company back in the day, hosting, and you've evolved quite dramatically since then, obviously with OpenStack and more yeah. enterprise space. Talk about how the actual data center and the infrastructure is evolving in these recent times. Yeah, it's, um, the nice thing for us is that we actually don't spend as much time talking to customers about our data center. Uh, in the background, we, we build them, we design them, um, we've got data centers across, across the world, and it's really, Whatever problems we're trying to solve at scale, is it is it room level, data center level, campus level, those are the things that we are designing for now. So bigger data centers, being able to grow into you know, tens and tens of megawatts over time is really where we need to figure out. Um, that's why we have an awesome team that does that on a regular basis. Right. So we just opened one uh, over in London last year, or, uh, last year, yeah. Right. So um, that's the real challenge we have is, is scale is just immense. Um, you know, our first data center, we add that every every week now, every day now. Um, so how do we keep up with that pace? Right, right, which which clearly requires an uh, increased level of automation. I'm sure there's Absolutely. a myriad of tasks Absolutely. that were not automated that you guys are doing yeah. now. A automation, um, simplification, trying to find commonalities and standards where we can so that we're not customizing every single thing um, is high, high on our radar. You know, there never is enough automation in terms of what we do. Um, Storage and with you know EMC and Brocade both have been providing great tools for us uh, to consume. Right. Uh, and you know we have a, a roadmap longer than my, than my arm that will <laughs> you know help us keep automating that stuff. Right. Talk. About, let's shift gears a little bit. Talk about big data. Yeah. Um, a lot of talk about big data. A lot of things going on. A lot of POCs. A lot of tests. Uh, you know, the, the, everyone's constantly talking about. We had the dean of big data on Bill Schmarzo. Like, you know, find a project where you have a high probability of success that's not too big, that you can execute and really build on that. I wonder if there's any examples you could share with, with some of the customers or what you're seeing really on the adoption and how people are finding success and getting started on their big data journey. Yeah, and we have um, we, we, what we call a practice area. So we basically pulled um, all of our services that, that kind of align with that, whether it's Hadoop or, or Mongo or Redis, um, together into kind of one greater team. Um, they're really the ones that kind of work with customers and apply, again, our value there is, is the managed cloud is helping to provide the, the, the fanatical support and right. the, the expertise on top of that. So. Um, we're working with customers trying to help them figure out how to grow into it. How right. do you start with a POC? How do you evolve that over time? Right. Um, so we do it you know, every day with them, and each, right. one, each one has a different uh, uh, chunk that they are trying to bring to us. So <laughs> it's, it's interesting though, and so challenging. The, the other great topic, right, cloud obviously, cloud, 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 but kind of the hybrid cloud, right? Yeah. As, as we were talking a little bit earlier, really kind of, again, what's the workload, what's the right cloud? And you guys obviously a cloud company, but I'm sure you've got clients that have all types of clouds. They've got their own stuff that they had before they engage with you, or a different type of workload, and they probably got some stuff running on Amazon or Azure. So talk about kind of the reality of the hybrid cloud and, and how you see that kind of shaking out, that it isn't uh, it isn't the halfway house on the way to something, that hybrid is really yeah. going to be the solution because it's a distribution based on the workload. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of where, um, it, it, it's awesome to hear conferences like this where we talk about it because I think we've believed this for years now that there won't be one cloud for everything. There was one public cloud won't solve anything and one you know, dedicated or private cloud won't. And it's the ability to stitch those together. Right. Um, every customer has a different problem associated with that uh, and we can accommodate all of them. Uh, both on our premise, we can support off our premise, we support you know, hypervisors from OpenStack to VMware to, to Microsoft, so our breadth there and expertise there really helps. Right. Um, and we're not, we're not limited to one or the other. And where we, what, what you'd mentioned that we, we totally agree with is it will not be one size fits all. Um, and even those customers that start will grow differently over time and we're here to help kind of figure that out. Right. So you're you're the you're the storage guy. I, I think I heard on one of the keynotes earlier uh, in the last few days that something like ninety percent of all the data was created in the last two years. As you look ahead and figure out how are you going to scale yeah. as we have more connected devices, Internet of Things. We talked earlier today about you know connected socks uh, that tell you are you running enough or you're getting enough uh, perspiration or hydration, whatever it's down the street at the other show. What are some of the things you're thinking of? How are you getting out ahead of that curve 
uh, as this just massive wave and acceleration yeah. of more data is hitting you, your clients, and your data centers. Yeah, uh, multiple pronged approach. You know, partners like EMC absolutely help us with that, and they're kind of helping us figure those pieces out. Um, leveraging the strength of public cloud where it makes sense, um, even with partners like EMC being able to scale into it. So I don't think there's any one answer for it. We, we do worry about that. How do we maintain the growth that we have with storage and make it economical enough that you can keep everything you want to keep um, tying analytics so that in the future you can actually apply analytics to it. Right. Um, so I, I'd say we're going to be, it's a great problem to have that we're going to be fighting for the next couple <laughs> years. Right. Uh, I didn't know about the socks, but it'll be awesome when the socks can start, uh, you know, storing right. data in our, right. in our cloud, yeah. Yeah, and then again, all the, all the automation, right? Because you can't just Absolutely. keep throwing people at the problem. Yeah. Yep. So that's never the uh, never the right yeah. answer. And the thing I love about it is, is the one thing that I think is important is we can keep it all on a digital format, on disk somewhere, somehow. Right. Um, it allows us to kind of bring it in and promote it back to add services to it a year or two in the future. Um, so so I, I, I encourage to try not put stuff onto tape where I can. Yes. Um, just because but I can do tape's still around, right? People are still using tape again. Absolutely, it's, it's and, and tape is a, it's a, great, for it's a great, great answer for some of the problems, but uh, you know, thinking about it longer term, is, it's a really challenge, but uh, you know, we, we bring that expertise and we have some ideas uh, that we can help with. So, uh, I've been at the show a couple days, what's the most interesting thing that you've uh, seen since you've been here? Um, or you know, the one thing that I always love about this show, and I you go to the keynotes, you go to the sessions, I love talking to the customers in the, in the, in the sessions, or after the sessions, at how they're processing it. They hear something they didn't know, what are they thinking, Is it, what's, how's it going to affect their business, and I, I have you know, a handful of conversations a day that just really amaze me at that, how the broader customer base is really coming here to learn. Um, and taking away things that even I hadn't thought of in a certain way. So Can you share any of, the, any of the details? Not necessarily who it was or specifically uh, what they said. I, I think the best one for me has been the conversations around Data Lake, okay. right? It's like, yeah, I kind of wanted to do, I'm doing Isilon, but didn't realize that I could do ABC or it helps me add services later or you know talking about the economics of it um, getting into kind of a kind of a TCO type discussion around you know doing a dedicated cluster versus this and very very um, thoughtful conversations but I love the fact that they actually left with something they didn't know right um, and that's where you know it's, a, it's a right in our sweet spot and EMC's as well to help educate that next step how do right. you then harness that value so so we're getting the hook so we had you 2013 we had you 2014 you're here today what do you think we're going to be talking about in 2016 when we get you back uh, we're still going to be talking about that scale problem. Uh, how, how, it's how are we helping? Yeah, right? exactly. It's going to be more than we thought. It's going to be more than socks or, or gloves steep, or something. Up and to the right. Yeah. So, um, so it, we'll, we'll be talking about that, and I think I'll be interested to see what you know the the whole discussion around flash and spinning disk and what it's looking like a year from now. Um, has our portfolio changed, and, and how is that helping uh, our customers? So. Yeah, great. Well, Chris, thanks for uh, yeah. for taking a few minutes to stop by the queue. Yeah, it's awesome. Always great. love Thank having you. you on. Chris Good Wetzel partner. from Rackspace, uh, Cube alumni. EMC World Regular, we love having you on yeah. the uh, on the Cube. Appreciate it, thank you. So I'm Jeff Frick again. You're watching the Cube live from Las Vegas. It's EMC World 2015. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.